Lord desires to be said. So I yield to you right now, Holy Spirit, just take over. I pray that your anointing will fall on every word that comes out of my mouth, and I pray that it will produce fruit um, in the lives of those who hear it, Father, that it will also produce conviction in the hearts of those who hear it. And I pray, Father, also that those who hear it will hear it from the spirit from which it is intended, and that is with the spirit of love. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that you love us so much. You love us so much, Father, that you send out warnings and you continue sending out those warnings, Father, while we still have breath in our body, and that's called grace. So, Father, thank you for grace. Thank you for conviction. I'm delivering the word, Holy Spirit, and I know that you will do the rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, so, again, I can't see who's here. I didn't really get on to chat or anything like that. I just wanted to jump on and share what the Lord shared with me in a dream while I was on consecration. And of course, I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of prophetic dreams. That's my calling to be a prophet in the earth. However, God does not give me the liberty to share all of those dreams. But for this particular one, he did say share it. Um, before I share it, I do want to read a scripture. I want to start with the scripture and then I'm going to share the dream. And then I'm going to share the short message that I jumped on to share with those who are in the body of Christ. So I want to jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I'm going to read starting at verse 9 and I'm going to go through verse 47. The reason I'm giving you this scripture is because I'm the kind of person y'all know. I believe God's word is final. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So anytime somebody is sharing a dream with you or an opinion with you or anything with you, a vision with you, if they're sharing something with you and it cannot be backed up by the word of God, you do not receive that word. So the reason I'm starting with this scripture is because I want you to know that what I'm about to say, it aligns with the word of God. Does that mean that every dream that lines up with scripture is a word from God? No, it doesn't because the devil knows God's word as well. But that is the first litmus test. Anytime somebody comes to you with a dream, check it against the word. Make sure it aligns with the word. If it doesn't align with the word, reject it. All right. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going to start at verse 9 and I'm going to go through verse 47 and I'm reading from the King James Version. All right. And it says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. Um, I hope you all can hear me okay. I never do Facebook Live, so I don't know how to chat with you all. Um, I see some of you. I'm sorry. I'm out in the park in um, these flock gnats or whatever, like around here some swatting at them <laughs> um somebody posted let me know if you can hear me okay i just want to see if the comment is going to show on my screen all right so i'm not seeing the comments but i just trust god that the the, the audio is coming through just fine um, but again we're going to start with deuteronomy 32 verses 9 through 47 and it says for the Lord's portion is his people Jacob is the lot of his inheritance he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about he instructed him he kept him as the apple of his eye as an eagle stirreth up her nest fluttereth over her young spreadeth abroad her wings taketh them beareth them on her wings so the Lord alone did leave them and there was no strange God with him he made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock butter of king and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat and thou didst drink the pure blood of the great but Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked thou art waxen fat thou art grown thick thou art covered with fatness then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation 
They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom their fathers feared, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I want y'all to remember this scripture because this ties in with the dream that I'm going to share with you in a moment. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy, get this, both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hair. So this word does not discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're a, if you have a child, if it's a baby, it does not matter. This word does, is non-discriminatory, okay? We're reading through verse 47. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? Verse 35, again I'm reading Deuteronomy 32 verses 9 through 47 before I share what God has given me to share. Verse 35, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh 
and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with the people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. Verse 47, for it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. Remember that this is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. And through this thing, you shall prolong your days in the land whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. So I wanted to read that uh, verse of scripture before I share with you the dream that God, well, one of the dreams that God gave me while I was away on consecration. So in this dream, and I'm not going to share the whole dream, I'm just going to make it brief, uh, this point of the dream, and then I'm going to share a message, and then I'm going to call out some people. And I'm not going to be the only one calling out people. Some of you are being charged to call out some people. This is not exposing anyone. This is calling them like a showdown at Mount Carmel, where it's God's fire against the fire of those who serve and worship strange gods. So I prayed about, and this is why it took me a few a few days for me to get online and share this, because I know that God has charged me to call it out. Why am I calling it out? I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not condemning anybody. Get this. I'm calling these people out because they need to be warned. If they're not called out and they die in the state that they're in, hell is their portion. So me calling you out, if you get called out, me calling you out is not me judging you. Me calling you out is agape. It's me choosing to love you and call you out and warn you, even though you might not like it. And I'm calling you out because I was thinking about some of the, um, I was thinking about some of the people that's big in ministry, like Bishop T.D. Jakes, Sarita Jakes. And as I call these names, I'm calling you out. And if you hear me call these names, I need your help because all of these people that I'm calling out, Trust me, I've been in their DMs. I've dropped DMs. I've dropped messages to them. Whether or not those messages were read, I don't know. But I'm doing my part to let them know what the Lord is saying to them. And prayerfully, some way, somehow, they will get the message. So if I call them out, I want you, whoever listens to this message, you don't have to pray about it, whether or not you're supposed to tag them, because as children of light, we are to expose darkness. So I pray that Holy Spirit will give you a bold spirit to reach out and start tagging some of these people to get their attention on this message. And then once this, their attention is on this message, if, you, if, you, if you're tagged and you're called out and you disagree with anything that I'm saying, come. Let's reason together. We can go toe to toe. We can go with what the word says and what your rituals and all these things that you're doing, the serving strange gods, we can, we, can, we can meet together. We can reason together. So this is not to condemn you. This is to warn you. Now, I shared that because after I had this dream, I started thinking about some of the people like Bishop T.D. Jakes, Sarita Jakes, um, Sarita, and I'm going to, the ones that I'm calling out, I'm going to say what they're part of as well. So Sarita Jake, she's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. We already know I've done several messages on the false gods of Greek uh, sororities and fraternities. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. All right. So if you're a member of that church and I don't care if you get offended, if you're a member of the church, I do not care if you get offended. My job and my assignment is to warn you. But the Bible tells us, do not come into covenant with those who worship false gods and idols. So Bishop Jakes may not be a member of a fraternity. I'm not going to say what I've heard because I'm not speaking what I heard, conjecture and all that. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. I will call out his wife, Sarita Jakes. You cannot tell me that Bishop Jakes does not know that his wife is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. That sorority worships and pledges and is aligned with the false god. So if you go to the potter's house, whatever the god is that Sarita is pledged to, that's your god. 
Okay, that's the Bible. It tells us not to come into covenant with them. If you come into covenant with them, you're also coming into covenant with their gods. Not only is she a member of AKA, but she also practices yoga and has done it in the church. Yoga is a worship of Hindu gods. Study the origin of yoga. Study the origin of it. So there's no way that you can be a Christian. Taffy Dollar, call her out, tag her in the messages as well tag them okay let's reason together because i do not believe that these people know what they are doing and what the dangers are for what they're doing but if you go there and you stay there then you are choosing to align with the hindu god that she worships and has aligned herself with you're choosing to align yourself with the gods over that sorority that she has chosen to align herself with okay let's see who else Bishop Jamal, Jamal, I'm not going to even call their titles because until they get on the right side, I'm not, I, I'm not using that title in the body of Christ. Crazy thing, divine thing, when I was a member of AKA, I saw nothing wrong with what any of them was doing. Why? Because I was under a spirit of deception myself. When you're under deception in one area, you're deceived in a lot of areas. Once God led me to renounce AKA and he showed me what all of these organizations were about, the false gods that they were aligned to, went back and looked at the rituals and everything, I know, okay, there is no way that you can be in this organization and not be aligned with the false god. But the thing is, I did not know what I did not know. So I'm not using their titles, I'm using their names because their title does not matter in hell, their title does not matter in heaven. So Jamal Bryant, member of Kappa Alpha Psi, and I'm calling out these names, I'm gonna tell you another reason I'm calling out these names in just a moment. Jamal Bryant, Joseph Walker out of Memphis, I believe he's a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, I can't remember exactly what fraternity he's in, but I know he is in one. Uh, Marvin Sapp, I believe it's Kappa Alpha Psi for him. Erica Campbell, I know it's recently she was uh, nominated into AKA. Ja'Kalen Carr, in every single one of these people, I said I've already been in their DMs. Ja'Kalen Carr, Sigma Gamma Rho, who else? Um, and I'm not calling out all the ones who are in yoga and all of that. My main focus right now are those who are in idolatry and worshiping false gods outside of yoga. But if you know anybody that's doing yoga, I've spoken on that. Tag them as well. I called out Taffy Dollar. I called out Sarita Jakes because those are two that I know that's doing it. All right. But the reason I'm calling out these names is because after I had this dream and God showed me some of the things that was happening, I started thinking about some of the, the messages that these people have preached. I started thinking about their churches, their ministries, um, and how they, um, outside on the outside looking in, you would think that they're really sold out to God. So I was like, I cannot believe that they would dedicate all this time and all this service into doing things for God only to get to judgment day and he say depart from me I never knew you I don't think that's their intention I believe that these people really believe that they are okay with God I really believe that but that's what deception does it makes you think that everything is okay with God when things are not okay with God and again that's the purpose for this message so all these people that are in these ministries most of them I believe do not know the dangers that they are in they do not know that they are in danger of going to hell that's the Bible the Bible says those who are in idolatry are going to hell okay so that means if you die and you're still in it and you don't have time to repent it doesn't matter that you was a pastor of a mega church it does not matter that you were the first lady over a mega church it does not matter how many souls came to the altar how many people you preach to it does not matter what matters is at the end of the day you chose to align yourself with the false God and reject Yahweh that's what it comes down to so if you die and you don't have breath enough in your body to repent hell is your portion all right so this is a dream that I had this is the summary of the dream that I had and again I'm not sharing all of it but I'm sharing this part of it so in this dream 
um, there was a lot of people around, like a showdown at Mount Carmel, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. That was a scene that it was in. And I've had so many of those dreams recently where it's a showdown between God and the false gods. But in this dream, it was all these people that were gathered around and they were in the sororities, they were in the fraternities, they were in the Freemasonry, and they're all circled around like a big circle. Um, I can't think of an example to show you what it's like, but it's just this big circle of people that are in these organizations and they're surrounding me. Now me, it's not just for me. I'm representing the church. I'm representing you. I'm representing those of you that God has tagged and called and chosen to speak out against the idolatry. And that's all of you. Okay? Because if you don't, then the blood of those who are lost, the blood of those who perish, their blood is on your hands. So you don't have to pray about whether or not you're chosen to speak out against it. The Bible says that you are, or the blood is on your hands. But all of these people were surrounding me in a big circle. I'm there in the center of this circle, and it's like they're watching me. They're watching me to see what's going to happen because they think that their God is about to take me out. Or they think that their God is about to take the church out because I was representing the church in that dream. So while they're circling around me thinking that they're about to win, then out of nowhere comes this false god of Alpha Phi Alpha. It was a black and gold demon. He had gold face. And I knew that it was the god of A Phi A because that's what Holy Spirit said to me. So as he came to me, he said, I'm going to kill you. And so as he started coming to me and the people in the circle was like cheering him on thinking, okay, this is the end of Faiza, which is representing the church. They're coming towards me and I just look up to the sky and I start saying, Yahweh, Yahweh. And as I said, Yahweh, and I kept screaming Yahweh, I looked up at the sky and I knew that that was God in the sky. It was God. I could see him. I could see him. But the people around me and the false God of a did not see Yahweh. This is what they saw. So when I started crying out, Yahweh, Yahweh, a cloud appeared in the sky. When they looked up, a cloud appeared in the sky and the cloud was in the shape of a bull. The cloud was in the shape of a bull with a, uh, it had a nose ring in its nose, but that bull represented their God, their idol. So while I'm seeing Yahweh and Yahweh is keeping all these spirits from attack because the spiritual warfare that comes against those of us who are choosing to speak out, that spiritual warfare is so great that sometimes you be like, God, I don't want to say nothing else. I don't want to say nothing else because every time I speak out, something happens in my life. But God is saying, no, you keep speaking out. I got you. I got you. It's a showdown on Mount Carmel right now. So those God, remember in the scripture that I just read, I told you, remember the part where it said God hid his face from them. Okay. And I read that scripture because I wanted you to see where Yahweh will back up and he will not be the God to protect you. He will let your God protect you. So when I was calling out Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh was protecting me. But when they looked up, they didn't see Yahweh. They saw their idol. They saw their false God. And that was the false God that was responsible for protecting them in that battle that we were in. Y'all already know the end result. Yahweh won. And the way, the way, the, the way that battle was won it ended with me praying. I was telling them what the word said. And as I told them what the word said, I would pray. So it's like I was praying. I was giving the word and interceding at the same time. So this is a message to the church. This is a message to those of us who are called to speak out on these things. You don't speak out on these people just to be condemning them. You don't speak out on them just to be bringing exposure. You have to do your assignment as well. That's deliver the word to them and then pray for for them that they receive the word and then zip your lips. You ain't got to say nothing else. Let Holy Spirit do his work. Let Holy Spirit do his job. But while Yahweh was protecting me in the dream, their false God was responsible for protecting them in the dream and their false God did not win. Now, one word that God gave me to share was uh, cat cataclysmic, cataclysmic. So what's about to happen is some of, it's already started happening every day. You can look in the news and there's something coming out about a pastor or a pastor dying. These caught up in idolatry, Freemasonry. A lot of them are into this new age religion. Every time someone passes, I ask God, show me the breach. 
Show me the breach, Lord, because you promised us long life. And for this person to be a ministry leader and to die that early, there has to be a breach somewhere. So usually I'll go to their social media and I'll see things on their social media that open them up to those demons, whether it's them listing their um, zodiac sign, whether it's them being in yoga, whether it's them being a part of a sorority, or maybe their parents or some, you know, their husband was a member of a sorority or fraternity. So as we read in the scripture, that God is responsible, that false God is responsible for protecting them. But in the battle that we're in right now, it's about to be cataclysmic in the body of Christ. You're about to see even more and more people dying and you're going to be asking, why are they dying? Okay, know that there was a breach. There was a breach somewhere in the covenant. God may show you what that breach is. He may not show you what the breach is. But this is a warning. This is a warning to those that I called out. T.D. Jakes, Sarita Jakes, Taffy Dollar, Joseph Walker, Jamal Bryant. Who else? Y'all tag them in the comments. If you know they're a member of a sorority and a fraternity, tag them in the comments so they get this warning. But there are some cataclysmic things. I, I wish I could look up the dictionary right now to see the definition of cataclysmic. If somebody is watching in the comments, look up the definition of cataclysmic to get the verbatim definition and post it in the comments. I looked it up. I just can't remember it verbatim. But cataclysmic, it's not good. It's like it's a clashing without a good end. So right now, what's about to happen, more of what's about to happen is there are about to be cataclysmic events in the body of Christ. It's going to take out ministry leaders. It's going to take out the ministry leaders children. It's going to take out their spouses. It's going to take out the ministry ministries that they thought were godly ministries unless they repent repentance is key right now so that means all those scriptures that we just read from Deuteronomy chapter 32 the death and God wetting his arrow and his sword with the blood of those who chose to worship idols it's coming it's coming and it's a song it's a song and the lyrics to that song, it said, everybody thinks they're untouchable until they get touched. So all these people that's making a mockery, thinking that it's okay to be a member of these organizations. It's okay to do yoga in church. It's okay to have all this new age stuff and idols and witchcraft and follow horoscopes and zodiac. All of you who think that it's okay, it's okay. And yes, you are untouchable until you get touched. And some of y'all about to get touched if you don't repent. And the end of that scripture that I that I read, it said, this is your life. This is your life. So you need to take this warning seriously because, yes, you think you're untouchable in ministry. Yes, you think you have this mega ministry and this little girl named Faiza Imani, who don't a whole lot of people know, she's calling me out. Who is she to call me out? I'm God's servant. I'm God's servant. God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I'm a foolish thing. I'm a foolish thing. And if you choose not to repent and you get before him on the day of judgment, remember the scripture which says that you'll get before him and he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Okay. Your response is going to be, but God, but God, I didn't know. I didn't. Know. Okay. Earth, heaven and earth records this day against you right now. It's recording this servant named Faiza Imani who's sitting on this park bench calling you out and warning you that God is not pleased with your idolatry. God is not pleased with your idolatry. He's not pleased with your worship of strange gods. He's not pleased with you being in these sororities and fraternities that are aligned with false gods. And he's calling for you to repent. If you do not repent, you are about to experience something cataclysmic. Do not wait for it to happen. Do not wait for a child to die. Do not wait to have a miscarriage. Do not wait for your spouse to die. Do not wait for you to, your, to get cancer. Do not wait for you to get tumors or something that's going to take you out. So I'm telling you right now, if you do not repent, it's going to happen. That's going to happen or you're going to die and you're going to go to heaven and he's going to say, depart from me for I never knew you. So that's what I wanted to share. That battle in that dream. We have Yahweh to protect us. Those who are surrounding us, waiting for our downfall, waiting for us to shut up, waiting for us to stop talking about it, waiting for us to stop preaching against idolatry, stop preaching against all this new age stuff, yoga, witchcraft, 
all this other stuff that they're doing that does not please God. They're waiting for us to shut up. They're like that false God of A5A that I was battling in the dream that said, I'm going to kill you. But Yahweh is our protection. And their false God is going to be their downfall because he cannot protect them from this cataclysmic event that's about to happen in their lives if they don't repent. So that's my charge. That's my charge today was to jump on here. Holy Spirit, is there anyone else I need to call out? Now, the whole list of those who were on the shofar list, I blew the shofar last May. I think it was last May for my birthday. And there was a hundreds of names that you all sent to me to put on that shofar list. I prayed about calling them out. I didn't call them out because I don't want to breach the trust that you sent that you sent those names to me and trust. So I'm not calling them out, but I'm charging you and God is charging you to call them out. I bind that spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus that will make you fearful from tagging them and from calling them out. I bind that spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and may Holy Spirit blanket you with the spirit of boldness to speak out, to cry loud and to spare not because again, as the Bible says, this is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of heaven and hell. And if you love them and you truly love them, you'll call them out because whom God loves, he corrects. God is not wanting these people to go to hell. If he wanted them to go to hell, he wouldn't warn them. The devil wants them to go to hell. If you're listening and you got tagged, the devil wants you to go to hell. And that clenching in your jaw that you feel right now that's making you feel some kind of way about the person that tagged you or that's making you feel some kind of way about me telling you that you're going to go to hell, that feeling that you're feeling right now, that's that strong man of deception rising up in you to guard his territory. He wants you to get offended at this message. He wants you to reject this message. He wants you to say, who is she to tell me? Who is she to say this to me? I have a mega ministry. I sing all over the world, Erica Campbell. I sing all over the world, Jacqueline Carr. Who is she to say this to me? I'm God's servant. I'm his mouthpiece. And I'm telling you this because God loves you enough to warn you. Jacqueline, you're young. You have a lot ahead of you. Do I, and oh yes, I'm gonna put this out here too. I don't care if I get banned from Facebook, from calling these people out and saying that I don't care. I don't care, I really don't care. But if you're listening to Erica Campbell's music and she's a member of AKA, trust and believe that that same spirit of deception that's on her music is coming into your life because words are spirit and they are life. Whoever you listen to, you get the spirit of that person. So if you're listening to her music and she's deceived into serving a false God, then you're going to be deceived into some area of your life. If you're deceived in one area, you're deceived in many. No, you might not join an organization, but I can guarantee you deception is going to be somewhere. If you're listening to Jacqueline and she doesn't repent, she hasn't repented, whatever spirit is on her, you're receiving that spirit. That's why now when I play a lot of music, I don't play a lot of these people, these popular artists right now because they are in idolatry. And I love God's sheep too much to spread that spirit amongst the body of Christ. So yes, I'm calling you out. Yes, those who are on this live and in the comments are calling you out. And we're doing it because we love you. And those of you who choose to continue to listen and support these artists who are in these organizations, support these ministries where they're in these organizations and they're in idolatry, they're into the witchcraft, they're into the yoga, they're into the zodiac signs, they're into all these things. If you choose to continue to support them, one, the blood is on your hands, but two, bring it to me, Holy Spirit. I was about to say something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Be tagging folks in the comments. Yes, if you continue to support them, the spirit that is on them, you receive that spirit, but you're also coming into covenant with them and the blood shall be on your hands. 
And if you choose to ignore me, I've done my job. You cannot believe it. Go back and read what the Bible says about coming into covenant with those who worship strange gods. Covenant means you make an exchange for mutual benefit. That means I give you something, you give me something. So if you're buying their music, you're giving them something. You're giving them money and they're giving you something. They're giving you music that's supposed to be worshiping Yahweh, but it's not. It's worshiping a false god. Because Yahweh steps back. Because they chose to worship and align themselves with the false god. The god that they're singing about, it's not Yahweh. It's their false god. So do not listen to their music. Pray for them. And then if they repent, then go back and listen to their music. Because at that point, you're listening to, to music through a clean vessel. Oh, that's what I was about to say. So some of, some of them who are tagged in the comments, they'll say, I'm in the end. You're choosing not to listen to their music and you're, not, you're choosing not to go to their churches or their ministries anymore. Some of them will say, who are you to judge? You're judging me. You're judging me. Okay, and your response, so you can be okay with that, is that I'm not judging you, I'm judging myself. I see what you're doing, I'm telling you what the word says, but because I know what the word says and because I know the word tells me to come out from among you, I'm judging myself. Because if I do not come out from among you, then I'm bringing damnation on my own soul from being in covenant with you. So no, we're not on here judging you, we're judging ourselves. We're choosing to align ourselves with who the Bible says align ourselves with. And either you're on the Lord's side or you're on the side of the false God. You need to pick and choose. You need to pick and choose and you need to repent to avoid that cataclysmic event. And that's all I got. That's all I got. So whether you were on the live or even if you listen on the replay, I've done my part. Now your part is to start tagging those who are in these ministries, mega ministries, singers, tag them. If you don't want to say it to them yourself, tag them in the comments. This video will say it to them. I'm not scared. And y'all pray for me. I'm going to pray for y'all because we're locked arms on the front line right now. We're in the midst of a battle right now where it's between God and the false idols. And the false idols, they've already lost. They've already lost the battle. It's just we don't want to see we don't want to see no more bloodshed in the church. So we're trying to get those out of deception in the church. We want you to lock arms with us, Sarita. We want you to lock arms with us, Erica Campbell. We want you to lock arms with us, Jamal Bryant. You got too much knowledge, Jamal, to be deceived into being in idolatry. Do you know how God could use you in the body of Christ? It's the anointing that destroys yokes. You do not have an anointing without God. You have false powers from a false God. And God is calling you to repentance. Jamal, Marvin Sapp, Joseph Walker. Repent. In the name of Jesus, repent. For it is your life. And that's all I got. So Holy Spirit, I thank you for every word that was spoken on this live today. I thank you that these words will produce fruit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for convicting those individuals. And if you need to hear more and you need scripture, go to my website, faizaimani.com. Click on replays. Click on Holy Smoke. We got Holy Smoke on there, part four through seven, I believe. But it's a lot of word. And it's telling you about what the word says and what these organizations and what they're about and all of that. And it lines everything up against the word of God. And there's even one called Relationships of Baal, Holy Smoke Relationships of Baal, where we're talking about who you choose to connect yourself with and who you should choose not to connect yourself with. So if you had any problems with anything that I said about you needing to separate from these people and you needing to not be supporting these people in their sin, go in to listen to that message about relationships of Baal. But that's all I got. Um, I love y'all and I just wanted to jump in and share this and I pray that y'all heard me. I believe the audio came through just fine because I see the hearts and everything. Um, but yeah, so I'm off consecration now. And I told y'all, I posted a few days ago, I make no apologies. I make no apologies to whoever is offended by this message. None whatsoever. Because I'd rather see you offended and get this word and go to heaven 
than to see you not get offended and go to hell because nobody warned you and nobody told you. All right, and those of you who God has tagged to be speaking out against this, which again is all of you, I pray for your strength. I pray for your boldness. May the blood of Jesus cover you. I bind every spirit of retaliation that would try to come against you. Father, protect your people. We are all locked arms together. And I thank you, Yahweh, that you are the God that has already fought and won for us. Yahweh Tassaba, you are the God that has already won every battle and secured this victory. In the name of Jesus, we call it done. Angels, do your work. Holy Spirit, do your work. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. It is so. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all on the other side of the video on social media. Um, be blessed. Take care.